Hey everyone, I'm back with another video covering AI news, drama, and updates, and it has been an interesting week. For those who haven't seen the video that I just dropped a few days ago, go ahead and check that out first to kind of get caught up on the situation. One of the things that came out of that is I noticed in the comments there seemed to be a lot of people questioning why I even defend AI in the first place. And so I thought I'd start today's video going over some of the stuff that I've seen in the AI landscape, because this is not an AI art channel specifically. I cover a lot of stuff, a lot of news, a lot of information. And so today I want to start with a little bit of that. So first, let's talk a little bit about saving lives, specifically with brain tumors. It turns out AI researchers at the Mayo Clinic, using diffusion models and inpainting, just like AI artists, well, that technology also works to do this kind of work as well. By scanning in information about MRIs and things of that nature, eventually a model is generated where things can be better predicted, resulting in better patient care and lives saved. And like a lot of things I get excited about on this channel, this was released open source right onto GitHub. Switching gears a little bit, let's talk about the Infinite Conversation, which was a project put together where a bot is talking to another bot. This project's maybe a little bit more on the artistic side, but essentially you have two AI systems talking to each other. And of course, the conversation is meant to go on forever. Ironically, each of the two characters has their own philosophy, and the cyclical conversation is just like a cyclical conversation about philosophy in real life. No one really wins, and no one is really convinced of the other person's point. So it feels artistic on a couple of different levels, but a cool project nonetheless. Better way, but this will be the last thing. It's more of a desperate necessity. I have to interrupt you here because I disagree with you. You think the revolution is dead and I think it's not dead yet. At this point, I think we've seen a number of examples of people that have scanned things into their models using stuff like textual inversion. When I came across this story on Reddit, I was actually taken aback because it's not something I'd even considered. But I came across a story of a Redditor who would use textual inversion to scan in pictures of his deceased girlfriend. Through this process, he was able to create new images of someone who's no longer among us. And I just really thought that concept was touching. Hopefully as this technology evolves, we can even do more things like that. Based on that concept alone, entire new therapies might exist. You never know. I'm not going to go too deep into quantum machines or quantum computers, but I will simply say that a lot of them use very rare materials. And machine learning is something that's being employed now to find those new materials with a little bit of a better rate than what we'd previously had. A lot of universities got together, and this new system that they created has a 90% accuracy. And that may not mean much to you and I right now, but as quantum computers become a thing and start to become more and more employed, that might be a very useful thing. All right, here's a fun acronym for you. A-R-A-I, Augmented Reality Artificial Intelligence. That's what we're looking at here as we look at something like Simulon, where you're able to put 3D models and path tracing and all this other stuff using stable diffusion and it looks like it's meant to be done through a phone. So I haven't had a chance to try this myself. It seems interesting, but it was an example I came across of one of the many areas where you're seeing a lot of this technology evolve and become something very different than what it was originally intended to be. When I originally saw this picture, it reminded me of when Reddit added the place thing where everyone was able to do the pixels, but it looks like this is a collaborative stable diffusion project, which is an interesting concept. I'm not really sure how useful that is, but you know, may be fun for a lot of people. I'll admit, I did play around with it, and it is actually pretty fun. I'll make sure to include the link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. Using both inpainting and outpainting, we're seeing a lot more tools that are similar to the infinite image concept, where you can start expanding an image in whatever direction you want, or even combining multiple images together and kind of patchworking them. And we're also able to see things like isometric collages, like you see here. This is just another type of example of an art that we weren't able to do before, at least not as easily. Something I haven't really talked about yet on this channel is the fact that NVIDIA is creating their own model to compete with everything else we've seen. The DALI model, Stable Diffusion, etc. The difference is the way that their model works is you write words to symbolize different things, so it's kind of a unique concept. Anyway, their model isn't really even out for the public yet, and somebody's already created that concept with Stable Diffusion. So, I did come across that, and I haven't had a chance to play with this yet, but it does seem interesting. I really don't know if it's more or less convenient to have to write the word sun on the sun, or if it works via prompt, or you use both together. Once I have a chance to sit down and mess with it, I'll let you guys know if it's worth your time. And in the world of new checkpoint releases that have come out, different models and different flavors essentially for your stable diffusion build, we've got a lot of different options. Our boy Nitrosock has released yet another banger with Redshift. 
It seems like he was inspired by a specific rendering engine, so it's got this very unique looking output. And there's actually been a couple of articles that have came out about this one, so it does seem like a lot of people are really enjoying it. Another one came out that I think is worth mentioning, but also just because it's hilarious, is based on the Cats Broadway performance. And from what it looks like, I didn't actually download this one myself, but from what it looks like, everyone can become a cat. So yes, that is very, very exciting. My favorite one out of the three that I'm going to talk about here, though, is this one, which is Midjourney Diffusion. From what I understand, Midjourney has just upgraded their base model to V4. And of course, Midjourney is not free like Stable Diffusion is. But based on the fact that Stable Diffusion can input training from different images, someone has already gone about creating a Midjourney flavored version of Stable Diffusion. The output I've been able to get with this one seems very smooth, very fantasy-like, and, and in a lot of cases, it's exactly what I was looking for with that specific type of image. So I've preferred this one over the last few days. And as we talk about these checkpoints, I think the most important thing to talk about is the fact that Dream Booth is now available within the Automatic 1111 repository. So if you happen to be using the web UI, which a lot of my videos are based on, you definitely want to check out the extension for Dream Booth. What this is going to allow you to do is create your own models, just like Redshift, just like Cats, just like Midjourney Diffusion. If you want to flavor a specific model or a specific model flavor that you already have with different input, you're now able to do that from home in a lot easier of a format. You actually could have done it before, but it was a very complicated process. It's not even one that I'd gone through myself, but now you can actually do it within a very self-contained system. And if there's enough interest, I might put together a video kind of displaying how to go through each of those steps so you can train your own very unique model. As I end today's video, I want to not only thank those of you who made it to the end, but also those of you who've been supportive throughout the week. There was obviously a big influx of hateful comments. And being honest, that doesn't bother me at all. I put myself in that position and I can weather a storm. But I do appreciate those of you who fought the good fight alongside me. I encourage everyone to stay tuned because I'm anything but demotivated. And I have plenty more news coming down the pipe for you. But as for today, and as always, thanks for watching.